Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about dihydrate test. When two different characters are taken by Gregor Johann Mendel, what was the result? Let's see. So in dihybrid class, in this lecture, we will also discuss about law of independent assortment, law of independent assortment. So from the dihybrid class, Gregor Johann Mendel proposed the law, the third law of Mendel, that is law of independent assortment. So here we have also we have already studied about monohybrid class where Gregor Johann Mendel took a single character, that is the stem length. But here in the dihybrid class, he took two different characters, and they are the seed set on seed color so what are the seed sets round maybe round or wrinkle and the seed color may be yellow or green so here we have two different sets of the seed that is round and wrinkle and two different colors of seed that is yellow and green okay so how he took these two characters for his experiments let's see so in dihybrid class we have the parents which have a round seat the shape is round and color is yellow he crushed it with Another plant having seed, a wrinkle in shape and green in color. We have small R's for, for wrinkle and capital for round and capital Y for yellow color and small Y for green color. So now let's see what will be the gametes. From here we have capital R for the round shape and capital Y for the yellow color and from here we have small r for wrinkle shape and small y for green color. After fusion of these two gametes from these two different plants we will have the offsprings having capital R smaller capital Y small y. So this plant was found to be a plant having round seeds on yellow color yellow color of the seed so from these mandel concluded that here the round set round set round set on yellow color yellow color are dominant or dominant over the wrinkle set on green color so this is the result of F1 generation of Gregor Johann Mendel's dihybrid class. Now he self-fertilized these plant and found different types of plants, plants of different characters. Let's see what was the result of self-pollination of the round yellow hybrid round yellow plants. So now the F1 become P2. Now we will consider it as parent 2. Here we have capital R small f, capital Y small y, that is the F1 becomes P2, is crushed, is self fertilized or self pollinated with the same type of plant. And here the different types of gametes can be obtained. So, four different types of gametes we can find from here it will be capital R, capital Y, or capital Y, R small y small r capital y or small r small y so these are the four different types of gametes we will find from these parents likewise here also we have the same condition capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y so these are the four different types of gametes we can obtain from these f1 plants so here we will see how we draw these gametes. 
how we can get these gametes in an easy way let's see so first take allele 1 then allele 2 then what will be the gametes allele 1 allele 2 and gametes along with the frequency so allele 1 let's take it as the shape of the seed half r and half will be and half will be smaller allele 2 here half will be capital y half will be small y likewise here also half will be capital y half will be small y when this half r is fused with half y will have have gamut which is one fourth r y here we have one fourth capital r small y here we will have one fourth smaller capital y and here one fourth smaller small y so these are the different gametes we will get from the from these different types of parental plants so the frequency will be one fourth one fourth one fourth one fourth so out of the four different gametes we will have one or capital R capital Y gamut, one capital R small y out of four one smaller small y and out of four one smaller small y here smaller capital Y. So these are the different gametes we will get from these two parents. So now we will see what will be the result of fusion between these gametes between the gametes of these two plants of same type. Now let's see the result by drawing the Punnett square. So we have these four gametes, these four different types of gametes and let's see by using Punnett square what will be the result. So look at this, this is the Punnett square where we have one parent this one and another parent here also of the same type. So there are two different parents. So from these two parents, we will have four different types of gametes. And what will be the result? Let's see. Let this one is male, and we have four different types of gametes like capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y, and small r, small y. Here also the same. Let this is the female plant. Here also capital R, capital Y. Yes. There are also four different types. Capital R, small y, small r, capital Y, and small r, small y. So now let's see by fusion of this gamut with this gamut, what will be the product? It will be capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. Likewise here, by fusion of this gamut with this one, we will have capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y capital R small r, capital Y small y. By fusion of this gamut with this gamut, this with this, then with this, then with this, we will have these products. Likewise, here we will have capital R, capital R, capital Y small y, capital R, capital R, small y, small y. Likewise, we can easily fill off these squares by looking at the two different gamuts and how they fuse to give us different types of plants. So here it will be capital R small r, capital Y small y, capital R small r, small y small y, small r small r, capital Y small y, small r small r, small y small y. So in this way we can easily represent the different plants, different offsprings we will get by the self pollination of the F1 generation. So we will have these 16 different plants. So let's see what is the phenotypic and genotypic ratio of Gregor Johann Mendel's dihybrid case. So we'll have these different results from the self pollination. Now we'll see that here we will have if we have any one R means it represents the round shape of the seed because round is the dominant character. 
Likewise, if we have a single capital Y, means it will represent the yellow color of the seed. So look at here, we will have capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. So this is a round, round and yellow, round yellow seed producing plant. So how many plants are there that will produce round yellow? Let's see. This one will produce round yellow. This one because one capital R and one capital Y is present. Here also, here also. This one is also round yellow. Here it is not. This one is round yellow. This one is round yellow. This one round yellow. And this one. So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So how many round yellow are there? Nine. Then let's see this one round green. So one is dominant, that is seed cell and green because it is recessive and let's see how many round green seeds, how many uh, plants are there who produce round green seeds. One round green, this one is round green, here it is also round green. So there are three plants that will produce round green seeds. Next we will have a wrinkle, a wrinkle yellow. How many wrinkle yellow seed producing plants are there? Let's calculate. Here it is having small r, so it is wrinkle set and capital Y, so it is yellow color. Here also we will have a wrinkle yellow. This one is also wrinkle yellow, so it is also three in number. The last one which we have is the wrinkle green. Both are recessive characters and we have a single plant having a wrinkle green character. So we have the phenotypic ratio that is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, 9 round yellow, 3 round green, 3 wrinkle yellow and 1 wrinkle green. So this is the phenotypic ratio. Phenotypically, externally, if you will see the seed set and seed color, we will found these four different types of plants and the ratio between them is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So let's see the genotypic ratio, what will be the genotypic ratio of Gregor Johann Mendel's dihybrid test. So 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is the phenotypic ratio. So let's see the genotypic ratio, what, are, what is the genotypic ratio of dihybrid test. It is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. Okay. So this is the genotypic ratio of Mendel's dihybrid cross. So this is the detail of the ratio that is called genotypic, genotypic ratio. So the ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. And the first one is this genotype having pure round yellow character. Look at it. Here it is a single plant which has both the round and yellow character dominant. Both the alleles are dominant. So this type of plant a single is available. Likewise round yellow, pure round and hybrid yellow. Look pure round and hybrid yellow two plants are there. Likewise, round green plants, a single plant is there, round yellow, hybrid round, pure yellow, two plants are there, hybrid round, hybrid yellow, two, four plants are there, hybrid round, wrinkle, uh, hybrid round, pure green, two plants are there, it is pure wrinkle and hybrid and pure yellow, wrinkle and pure yellow. A single plant is there, wrinkle green, a single plant is there and wrinkle hybrid yellow, two plants are there. So this indicates the genotypic ratio of Mandel's dihybrid cross. From this, we can withdraw the law of independent assortment. Law of independent assortment states that each pair of contrasting characters remains independently and 
behaves no association they do not have any association during gametogenesis so the two characters represented by two different alleles four different alleles here it is round represented by capital r here it is green represented by small y when they inherited to the next generation they separates from each other and their character is seen is found in the offspring independent of one another so round or wrinkle shape of the seed has no relation with the yellow or green color of the seed so the shape of the seed is dependent on the two alleles capital r or small r which migrate to the next generation independent of the character of color of the seed that is capital y or small y so they separate and independently transfer to their offspring so this is the law of independent assortment there is no correlation between the two characters taken by gregor johann mendel in dihybrid cross so this is all about the dihybrid cross of gregor johann mendel and remember the ratio of gregor johann mendel's dihybrid cross the phenotypic ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 and remember this is very important for your board exams prepare well thank you very much